Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Monday morning. You go to my Facebook page right now, go to the first post. It's about social media for social change. It's about the Chicago Tribune, the Baltimore Sun. It's about how mainstream media demonizes people, all right? One of my documentaries were, I had 13 documentaries. One of my documentaries was called Letters, Portraits of a Letter. Portraits of a Letter was about the mainstream media. It was about Fox 45, it was about Bill O'Reilly. It was about the way that the media demonizes black people. It was about Jane Miller. That's one of the reasons that y'all locked me up because I made a movie about your, your media. At 13 movies, all right, 13 movies. It was like a spoke on a wheel. It was like a wheel of fortune. 13, spin it, and just spin it. And all of the all of the movies were tied to the toilet. Like I said, I worked for 85 percent of the richest people in the state. Everybody know Kathleen Hughes. Everybody know Radio One. Everybody know Larry Young. Everybody know W O L B. Everybody know uh, Roland Mark. All right, this was about racism and social media and how they control the narrative. All right, now racism doesn't work without black cooperation. And since they control the media and the stations, just like Brian Allen's trying to get control of, uh, want to get that 200, he want to own more TV stations. They don't want him to have own them. So we're going to take social media, because social media free. And I've been doing this since 2006. Social media for social change. VI, social media. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. It's free. Only thing it costs me is a cup of coffee in the morning. $2.60. Versus how much money you spend at your TV station. Because how much do you spend at your TV station? You feel me? I told you I was a finesse hustler. And we're going to level up. I gave y'all a chance and opportunity to come clean. I gave y'all a chance and opportunity to come clean. You ain't want to do it. You want to still sit here and demonize black people. So what I did Friday, Friday was just a taste of how I'm going to treat y'all. Y'all had Mayor Pugh up there, and y'all was lynching her, all right? Because she ain't the only one that should have went to jail. Y'all had all the TV cameras up there all day long. I sat up there with y'all. I told y'all when I went up there, I might check the room. I might check the outside of the thing, right? And when I might check that, I told Robert heard that I got a whistleblower's application. That whistleblower's application is right here. That whistleblower's application is right here. And if you look at this, uh, the, the, the first post on my page, it's about the, for the prison industry. I sent it to Dan Hinkle of the Chicago Tribune in 2015. The Waukegan New Sun knew about it in 2006 when I started this. The Baltimore Sun, knew, the Baltimore Sun, the Baltimore Sun knew about it all the time. So did Jane Miller. Y'all did the first story on me on Hard Look. Told you I was a finesse hustler. It was about the prison industry. If I go to jail, who's gonna take care of my family? Well, y'all took me from my family, and y'all participated in it. I told y'all I was making a movie and a documentary about the prison industry. If you go to, like I said, it's Dan Hinkle. Now. It took me 13 years to get here, but I'm here. December the 2nd is the anniversary of my son's death. You feel me? December the 2nd is the anniversary of my son's death. Rob Fix hasn't produced my movie, so I'm getting ready to sue everybody. My movie hasn't been produced, and my property hasn't been returned. So the first of the year, during February, when y'all take Mayor Pugh to court, I'm going to be taking y'all to court, in federal court, in February, during Black History Month. I guess that's not now on Friday, y'all seen me hand Robert Err this. Two thousand fourteen. All right. I tell that's hustler. I do my paperwork. I ain't got to be beating you up. I'm gonna beat you down. 
reaching into my pocket. What's up, man? All right. <laughs> the cameras are powerful, too. They got Google. They got emails. They got everything I need right here. I don't have to carry a lot of papers and a lot of files. All I got to do is click, tap, and send. Look, we're going to go to our emails. And we're going to go to the Facebook uh, Messenger. Let's see, y'all develop those those tools to, to track us. I use the tools to expose you. I'm going to go to Johnny Oleski and Johnny Oleski's. Gave you a re-entry program. It's called Shorty's Bootleg Barbecue. It's a re-entry program. You locked me up in Illinois. You locked me up in Maryland. You made me homeless. <laughs> then I opened up a business. What's up, man? Then I opened up a business. All right. When I opened up my business, I showed you that my re-entry program works. I don't have a house. I'm homeless. So I'm going to show you how the homeless program going to work. I'm a prisoner's right advocate. I work for inmates, prisoners. See that? Baltimore Sun had this. Yeah, y'all had this. NAACP, the ACLU, you had this. So we had a speaking engagement the other day down in Taos, not in Taos, and where we were, at, we was at the fairgrounds on Thursday. And I spoke to this lady and I spoke in front of the, I spoke in front of y'all. It's about justice reform. Like I said, I'm a whistleblower and I'm a finesse hustler. You owe me, you're gonna pay me. I went to Congressman Cummings office. So President Trump is doing prison reform. All right, I'm a black Republican. I'm a black radical Republican. I wear my hoodie to work. I don't wear the Packers and docky shit. Don't play golf. Instead of a instead of a gun, I use the camera. Instead of a gun, I click aim and shoot this. That's all I gotta do. I told Rob Fix last year we had a falling out. We're going to pull up the emails and all that too, all the messages, all that. I told him if he didn't produce something for my son, by the time my son came by, that everything that he got can go in the garbage. I don't care. I done lost everything before. I don't mind losing something again. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, this movie was about the prison industry and our government. Y'all locked me up for it, but I'm smarter than the average bear boo see this you see that that's Rob fix that means that anything that he has in his possession it's my intellectual property it's covered under the Constitution it belongs to me unless he want that shit to hit the airwaves the Sundance Film Festival that shit go in front of the Department of Justice that's who get the first view just like the movie birth of a nation yeah President Trump get to see letters design before anybody else because it's evidence for a whistleblower's application I made a movie I ain't stupid See that? Yeah. Movies about Congressman Cummings. Uh, it was about Congressman Cummings. It was about Bill Clinton. It was about Quasi and Fume. It was about black faces selling out the black community and the Democratic Party claiming that they're making us safe. If ain't none of y'all talking about ending the war on drugs, all you're doing is regurgitating slavery. Yeah. <laughs> Everything. Everything. Like I said, I don't get my movie. I don't need the movie. I need justice. And I'm going to get justice one way or the other. You're going to give it to me here, or you're going to give it to me in the streets. Because I'm going to give you it everywhere I see you at. Bam. Right in your face. Not Facebook, not YouTube. Right in your face. Johnny on the spot. No cutting, no editing. Raw. Hard. Thank you.
See, Kathleen Pugh is a witness in my federal investigation. So if she don't be a witness, she's going to be a defendant. She don't be, she be a defendant, she can get more time. It ain't got shit to do with the books. It got shit to do with my barbecue. There ain't nobody in here to shut me up, neither. I apologize if I disturb you. That's that's notarized. See, she was part of the movie in the documentary. Judge Bell was part of the movie in the documentary. Ain't no law against making a movie. You took my intellectual property that's covered under the Constitution. If you look at Wayne Wright and Gideon, Gideon gives me the right to approach the, the, the Supreme Court on a meritorious case because you stole from a black man. You stole from the wrong black man. Don't never try to pimp a pimp and don't never try to play a player. Remember that. The first Republican was uh, Hannibal. He rode that elephant in the Himalayas. Ha, remember that? I'm a black radical Republican. Get my information from the FBI. Y'all got to follow me about that thing from 86 to now, dog. You got one in the FBI. You got one in the Department of Justice. The only reason that you ain't killed me or sent me to jail is because you're going to have to tell them yourself. Yeah, I ain't dumb, and I damn sure ain't stupid. <laughs> All right. President Barack Obama. President Barack Obama asked for an investigation on February the 8th, 2008. I was locked up in the state of Illinois. You feel me? I was locked up in the state of Illinois. That means that nobody can sign my checks, write no checks, do shit in my business. I'm a businessman. I own my business. Sole proprietorship. I'm the president. I'm the vice president. Dog, I'm the player. I play all positions. See that? So get that information from President Obama. Yeah, we're going to pull a full investigation. Federal, federal, state. Yeah. Triple crown, dog. And I ain't in the horse race. I'm the owner of the horses. Pollard towing. You're going to talk about un, 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 what they call it? Unlawful enrichment. Because you lock up black inmates. And when they go to jail, you take their properties. When you take their properties, you sell that shit. Then you resell it. And you auction it off. You go in their houses and you steal the property that's worth anything out of their houses and you sell it. Your police take that shit home. You get that jury to your girlfriends. Well, dog, I want what belonged to me back. I had African art. That African art was worth over fifty thousand dollars. I had clothes and jewelry, another fifty to sixty thousand dollars. My truck was six thousand dollars. Man, you're gonna pay me because I'm authentic. Pay me now, pay me later, but you're gonna pay me in thirty-three flavors. Be like now, nah, ladies on your ass. That's Ben Carter. See that? That's my fingerprint. That's my fingerprint because y'all got my DNA. Y'all took my DNA when y'all locked me up. So we're gonna check all this. Yeah, all of it. We're gonna go about the prison industry, mass incarceration, Alec the corporation. Yeah, we're gonna talk about the money you make behind the prison industry. <laughs> That's what the toilet was about. We're gonna finish that shit. Judge Pearson, we're gonna show you the money behind the machine because he judged. Governor O'Malley had nine judges. Those nine judges had five friends. Those five friends. All right, that's 45 judges. Now, if y'all having parties and events, y'all charging $250, $2,500 tickets, and lawyers and shit is paying for that. So this is play to play politics. If I pay this judge, if I pay that judge, then he'll give me favor in court. No, 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 no. That's Chicago type politics. That's called Operation Gray Lord. That's the same shit you did in Chicago. So, Robert Hur, Robert Harding, President Trump. We're going to have a full investigation of my incarceration. You can do it now, do it later. It don't matter to me because, like I said, I'm going to be doing this at Starbucks. For $2.60. Your credibility is going down the tubes, dog. Judge Pearson. Yeah. Yeah. 
You got criminal charges in uh, Baltimore County right now. You want to prosecute Schellenberger. You're going to give me Schellenberger now. You're going to give me to me later. You're going to give me Schellenberger. You're going to give me Schellenberger because her took that charge the other day. Her handed that paperwork. Her took that paperwork in front of everybody, so I'm be handed to him. Yeah. You see Chief Johnson, every time I see Chief Johnson, I treat him like a bitch. Straight up, I, I chased him out of City Hall. I chased him out of County Building. He ain't gonna come know where I'm at. Cause he know he participated in this. Do your paperwork. Do your research. <laughs> On February the 2nd, 2011, my mama died. At 8.50 a.m., I went to the state's attorney's office, and I turned Scott Schellenberger in. I blew the whistle on Scott Schellenberger. I told on a white man to another white man, and those white men locked me the fuck up. So we're going to see if white people go to jail. We're going to play Django with your careers, because Schellenberger's going to snitch. He ain't going to hold water. If you can't go to jail, what you going to do with, with Schellenberger? We're talking about 10,000 cases. 10,000 cases. They have to reverse and remand. 10,000 cases. That's a class action lawsuit. That's directly the corruption in your courts and your media participating in it. Your media participated in it. How many cases you gonna have to do in Illinois? How many cases you gonna have to do in Maryland? I'm a shorty. Everybody know me. I'm the king of barbecue. I'm the king of what I do. You feel me? So, like I said. Level up. I handed him this. Most be know about it, Greg. Burns ain't know about it. See, y'all make y'all's money through the courts and the criminality in the courts. We traded the penitentiary for the plantation cotton for cocaine, and we the cash crop. This is a non-violent, peaceful demonstration. Cause see, I'm a drug dealer, an ex-drug dealer. That's what you locked me up for. State of Illinois versus Dwayne Davis. I wanted to quit selling drugs, and I quit. Can't make me go back. But I'm still gonna fight for those that do, and those that's locked up, because your your incarceration is just it's racist. Like I said, President Trump doing the thing about the prison industry. <laughs> City, county, state, federal levels. I'm on $130 million in uh, film, that film shit. I had 13 movies at $10 million a movie. I can change the price tag of that. But see, that's my product. I ain't selling drugs, I'm selling movies. Change my product, I ain't changed my hustle. Yeah, 10 million per film. I got 13 I'm missing. Unless you give me my films back, give me my storyboards back, give me my property back, that's the price of my property. And who you think this money gonna come from? Yeah, because y'all participated in it. The shielding law don't work with that, all right? The shielding law don't apply to that. And when I can prove that y'all knew what you knew and prove that you knowingly lied to the public, 
Gonna do it like this. I'm a whistleblower. Governor Hogan had me thrown out of uh, off the state capitol. He had me thrown out the state house. But like I said, I'm a whistleblower. Got your attention. Y'all holding me illegally in this state. Y'all holding me financially and economically. I'm going to shit on y'all. 2020, y'all going to take me to court. I'm going to take y'all to court. I'm going to sue y'all for the prop my property. I'm going to sue Rob Fix for my movie. And we're going to take this to court. The same way that y'all paraded pool, Kathleen Q around in federal court, we're going to parade a whole lot more, y'all. We're going to have a real circus. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. GOP Carter going to go to court. Tell the branch going to go to court. Quasi and Fumi going to go to court. We're going to all talk about the prison industry and the money behind the prison industry. And who's going to take Congressman Cummings' spot because y'all selling this seat. Yeah. Y'all selling this seat like they sold Obama's seat because it's a lot of money in the prison industry in Baltimore. It's tied to your surety bonds, your 401ks, the judges, the lawyers. Yeah. That's where your retirement plans are tied to. I'm a caterer. I've been in your house. I know where your money go. I work for Dean Witter, Morgan Stanley. Those are my clients. We're also going to have a federal and a state audit on your board of elections. We're going to go to the fraud in your board of elections. Yeah. We're going to talk about fraud on the board of elections. The Democratic Party, because I'm coming after your money, and I know where to go after your money at. It's in the Board of Elections, and it's in the Comptroller's Office. It's in the Judge's Chambers. You kidnapped me from my home in 2011 because I was going to California to shoot these movies and sell these movies and documentaries out there in California, Las Vegas. I'm from Vegas. I got family and friends out in Vegas. Y'all didn't know about that. I got family and friends in California. Y'all don't know about that. Y'all just seen me alone and y'all thought I was by myself. No, I'm not. It's the underground. And the underground is strong and it's deep. We deep wherever we go. This paper. Uh, 
I asked y'all to investigate the Democratic Party about the prison industry and the corruption. Then I asked you to do Hogan. That's my lawyers. That's a body attachment, and they didn't lock nobody up. Like I said, the FBI got to follow me about like that. I don't see what the golf I ain't gonna show you the whole thing. I uh, I oh yeah, yeah, car. yeah. I probably don't get the outside air, the outside air, or the ground. But if it was in the ground, the and I actually got access to the but by the time you see the reason y'all locked me up in Illinois because when y'all locked me up in '86, you took fifteen thousand dollars cash from you, but you didn't put it on the books. Yeah, you didn't put it on the books. So when I came back to write my movie and do my documentary, I was going to talk about the corruption in the courts. Judge Boris was a, 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 a Judge Boris was a state's attorney when they locked me up. He was the one that prosecuted me, and he the one that stole the money. <laughs> he got mad that uh, he was a judge now, and I waited till he was a judge so I could take him to court and sue his ass. And then all the cases that he had to be had had to be reversed and remanded. So Judge Boris, Judge Foreman. Judge Rossetti, Judge Bridges, Waller, Ken LaRue. Everything that y'all touch is going to be reversed and remanded, going to be looked at because it was a federal investigation. I'm a whistleblower in the courts. That's seven of y'all, six of y'all, all right? And my lawyers, Mr. Bailey. I got I recorded the phone calls because I wasn't going to have no he say, she say shit. <laughs> when I told you my brother was William Lewis Davis, when I told you my brother worked for the FBI, fuck your whole game plan up. You didn't know how, what you was going to do with me. You going to kill my brother? What you going to kill my brother for? And then I got other brothers. I got cousins. I got nephews. I got uncles. There's a lot of us out here. I ain't the only one out here. Bam. Oh, let me get this one right. Now, claiming that you're on active duty, claiming that you're in the military, see that exonerates you from from crimes, and that exonerates you from crime. But when you get off active duty, your ass is mine. Ken Larue participated in the fraud. My lawyer and Ken Larue worked together to give me time. My lawyer and Ken Larue worked together to incarcerate me. My lawyer and Ken Larue destroyed evidence from the Waukegan Police Department. My lawyer and Ken Larue, Judge Bridges, conspired to deny me my civil and constitutional rights because I was exposing their corruption, like Operation Great Lord, 1980s. That's all I did is a repeat because y'all was repeating the crimes. Baltimore County ain't under this in decree. Baltimore City is. But neither one of y'all is exempt from the corruption in the courts. Now, Mayor Pugh is a witness in my federal investigation. She's a witness or she's a defendant. Bobby Zirkin is going to be a defendant. Schellenberg is going to be a defendant. Now, GOP Carter, you can, you can choose to be a defendant. This is my daughter. I'm going to call her back in a minute. Matter of fact, I'm gonna call her now. She's more important than you. Hey, baby girl. 
How are you doing? Yeah. Pissing off white people. <laughs> We're, I'm on Facebook right now. If you go on Facebook, you'll see me talking to you. <laughs> I'm gonna cut it off though. Hold on for one. Hold on for one minute. No, no, hold on for one minute. My daughter and me got some plans to make, so right now I'm gonna cut you off.